Topaz Labs have done it again. There's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.0.6. We now have an AI brush, something we've been really needing. I'm going to introduce it to you today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today's going to be a short video. I just want to introduce you to the all-new AI brush found in Topaz Photo AI. This is a new update. As I said, this is version 1.0.6. Now we have this AI brush, which I'm going to show to you. And there's been a lot of under the hood fixes and things like that. When you update Photo AI, this splash screen will come up. But you could take a look here, maybe pause and see some of the fixes that have taken place in Photo AI. In case you didn't know, if you own the image quality bundle, which consists of Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and Sharpen AI, Photo AI is free for you. Now, if you own a couple of those pieces of software, just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you right here. And then just come and click on Image Quality Bundle, buy for $199.99. But before you do that, log into your account and then come back here. And Topaz will calculate what you need to pay to complete that bundle and then you'll get topaz photo ai for free so it'd be a lot less money to do it that way so that makes sense and also if you're into photo editing you could get topaz video ai on sale right now it's a nice savings of 140 dollars, and this goes up until uh november 4th of 2022 so you get it on sale for 159 And when you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission. And this helps to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And when you support this channel, I really appreciate it. And I thank you. Okay, then let's check out this new brush AI. I'm inside the Topaz Photo AI app. I'm just going to click on Browse Images. And I have a stock image here that I'm going to work on. I'm just going to double click this. And it will go ahead and scan this image and determine what it needs. Now, I have face recovery disabled by default because I don't do many face images. And to set that up, you just go up here to preferences. And now we have this autopilot configuration where you can set different things up. In other words, if I click on it, you can do things like um, for subject detection, you could set it for default. Or if you do mainly portraits, you can set it for portraits or landscapes or none, whatever you like. You can shut uh, face detection on or off here to automatically do it each time. You could set it up to upscale small images for you automatically up to two megapixels or no, I'm sorry, 12 megapixels. And then under this image quality section for sharpen, you can enable when detected blur is low, medium or high. I just have mine set for all of those. So you get different choices here. And this autopilot configuration was added a couple updates back, which I did a video on. I'm just going to X out of here for now, but we can see what it's found. It's removed high luminance noise and it applied sharpening to a soft subject. And if we hover over subject, you can see it's determined that those pine trees are the subject. But what if I didn't want just the pine trees? What if I wanted everything but the sky and maybe the water down below? Let me show you what we can do here. We can come up here to subject detected, refine. Now, if you hover over subject, you can see there's the pine trees in the, with the red overlay. So click on refine. Now that's the default setting. Okay, it's looking for a subject. But in this refine subject area, we have some choices here. If we have a portrait, we could click on portrait and it'll find people, faces and things of that nature. Or if we have a landscape, we can click on landscape and notice what happens. Now it selects everything but the sky, or you could select none. I'm going to use landscape. So I have landscape checked on, but what if I didn't want the water down here? I only wanted from the shoreline up to the mountaintops here. What if I only wanted to add sharpening to that area? Well, we can kind of do it now. We can do it. It's not perfect yet but I'm gonna show you this AI brush. Now, Photo AI has been a work in progress, and please let me know in the comment section below what you think of Topaz Photo AI. Do you like the direction it's going? And as you know, with all of the updates that Topaz have been doing, this is a work in progress, right? It's gonna get better and better and better. Right now we have an AI brush. I'm gonna show you where it falls short and where it's really great and what I think they need to add 
hopefully next. And let me know what you think and what you want Topaz to add to Topaz Photo AI to make this experience better for you. Who knows, maybe they watch these videos and they see your comments and that will really help them. They need feedback. And speaking of feedback, you can go to topazlabs.com, come up to support and click contact us. And there you can email them and tell them what kind of issues that you're having and so on and so forth, or what things you would like them to change. And then you also have the community forum, click on that. And there you can see what other people were discussing and you could, and here you can comment on what other people have been discussing as well as open your own discussion and Topaz look at all this. And now for the AI brush, you'll notice down here at the bottom of subject after you've opened up refined subject, you have AI brush. It says clear strokes. So if you made some strokes of brushing and you don't like them, you can clear them. Then you can add to the selection or take away from the selection. So subtract will take away, add will add. Now let me show you something here. This brush is quite interesting. Now remember, it's an AI brush. This is not a typical brush like you would find in Photoshop. But if you notice here, you see when I move around on the image in the sky here, now right now I'm in add, but you can notice it's looking for edges and things. Now I don't see edges in there, but obviously it's seeing them. Let me hover over this cloud area here and you can see where it's picking up edges. Now there's a bug with this brush already, I'll tell you. See where the crosshatch is? You notice that the area it's selecting is under that crosshatch, about a half an inch it looks like. Okay, so that's a bug, but let me show you how you can get around that bug. This is something they'll fix, I'm sure, but it does have a bug. What I do is come down here to, see where it says 100% where you can zoom your image. I just change this to say like 200%, and then I'll come back to 100%, and that seems to take care of the bug. Now you see it's following the crosshatch. So that that's a little issue, but that's how you can take care of it. I just wanted to point that out. So just change your zoom and then come back to the zoom you were at, and that seems to fix that. Okay, so I could add to the sky here if I want to, but I want to take away this water down here. Now I'm gonna show you why I think this is not the ideal brush at this point. This is a very important brush because it can really grab the edges very nicely. Let's click subtract. Now notice when I come along the edge here, I can just kind of run this along here and look how it beautifully picks up the edge there. Okay, and I'm just running along here, but here's problems. I cannot change the size of this brush. And I'm sure they're still working on this, but Topaz let us try things before they're done. Is that a good or a bad thing? I think it's kind of good in a way because we can, you know, again, give our feedback and let them know. But look how I can beautifully just clean up that edge right there. It's really nice. So if you had problems in the mountain up here, like we could go ahead and clean that up. You see that? Isn't that nice? We could just really clean up these edges. And it does a really nice job. But I have this area here, but wouldn't it be nice if I could change this brush size and even take it out of AI brush and just brush this away? I can't do that. All I have is that little, you know, area where it's going to take, take things out. You see that? So believe it or not, it takes a long time. And I think you can believe it. It takes a long time for me to come along here and brush all this area out here. Or if I could lasso around here and then delete the red overlay from the selection, that would be really nice. But this is the brush. And like I said, I think it's beautiful for refining edges of things. It does a great job. But in terms of removing large areas, as you can see, it would take you a long time to do this. But this is brush masking and this is the start of it, but it, they're off to a great start. You know, I wish all the tools were here, but they're not and they will be coming. I am 100% sure of that. I know they're not just going to give us this. We need just a regular old brush where we can remove things or some type of a lasso tool that we could remove a big area at one time. But as you can see, this is not ideal. It's perfect if you just want to refine an edge of something like that. It does a really good job. But other than that, we need more work here in 
photo AI, but we're moving in the right direction. Hey, we didn't have brush masking and now we do. That's all I'm going to paint out for now, but I want you to see something else. We have this softness adjustment right now. It's at 20. That probably represents like 20 pixels, I would believe. But if I drag this to the right, watch the edges of all the masked areas. See how they get softer. So this is really nice to have this edge softness. I like it a lot. So you can adjust that to however you like it. And now that this mask is made, pretend this is all done here and I click done. Now, if I hover over subject, you can see the area I've brushed out in some of these areas I've refined up here. And that just deals with sharpness, by the way. So if I click and open up sharpness here, that's only going to be applied to the areas that were in the red overlay. And you'll notice also inside of this sharpen module, this is where it says subject only. You see that? And when I hover over this area, you can see the red overlay. Let's close this. But if I open up remove noise, you don't see any of that subject selection there because denoise is getting applied to everything. I just wanted to point that out. Well, there it is, everyone. That was the AI brush. I just wanted to show you how it worked today. And you all know that we need brush masking inside of Topaz Photo AI. It's not totally there yet, but we have a good start. I want to see that real brush come in where we can just brush a bunch of areas out without the AI technology. That AI brush is great for refining edges and things like that, as I said. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.